restoring one of my C64s, I actually stumbled across something very interesting. I worked on this 250425 board. As you can see, I have heat socket, uh, heat synced and stuff. Um, normally has a boot, boot ROM switcher, so that's the bottom half. And show you the top. There's this switcher with this fat switch up there. Just cleaned the whole case, came out really nicely, just a little yellowing. You can tell if you, if you just spin this a little. But the interesting thing about this machine is actually the keyboard, which says TKR 6012-2C. Don't know if this is some kind of serial number, but if you turn it around, actually has the solder points up here. And what is very, very, very different to all other keyboards I've seen is that, well, they're double shot. That's not so unusual. But the springs are actually inside the key or the key switch rather. So if you put a key switch on here, this is a very different typing experience than I'm used to on a C64. And it makes working these, uh, this kind of keyboard a treat because you don't have to fiddle with all the, uh, with all the springs. There's one spring actually, and it's only on the shift key. And the shift key does have these stabilizers built in. You can't remove them. On most C64s, the stabilizers are put as little stamps inside the key and you can pull them out and clean them. But here on this keyboard, these stamps are actually part of this whole keyboard's construction. So just wanted to show you this. It's quite interesting. And I'll show the finished result of this C64 in the end. But I've never seen a keyboard like this. I read ab about it. There obviously were different kinds of keyboards. This one has a very short travel in the key. And I very much like this. You can see this. It's almost no or very short travel because the spring is inside the switch and not the spring on the switch. I like this a lot going to clean this and show you the result in the end. So I was working on the cleaning of the keys and I thought, well, maybe I should give you a little more insight into the machine. All these ships seem to be from week 49.85, so 1985. Um, I got this machine first hand, so uh, from the original owner who bought it, I guess, in 85 or 86. And while I was cleaning the keys, oh wait, before I get into this, let's just quickly check the serial. Serial number is WG, which I guess stands for West Germany, A309876. And this is a PAL machine, by the way. Um, while I was cleaning the keys, I thought, hey, why not bring out some other keys? And luckily enough, I have a bag of C64 spare keys. I mean, who doesn't? And these look like this. And as you can see, these key stamps inside are a little recessed. And if we look, this is, by the way, the return key. And if we look at the return key from this keyboard, you can see First of all, there's only one stem instead of three, and this stem is not recessed. So this this pretty much explains why there's so little travel in the key. Um, same here. This is from this keyboard. This is the shift key, which has the same size as this control key, and as you can see, only has one stem instead of two. So this means that also the plastic cover which is holding the, all the keys this one must be a little different because um, if you put this key on this 
the key would be a little shifted to the side. So this whole black construction must be different too. Um, yeah, as you can see, the keys are still, no, it's the wrong key. The text on this keys still yellow, but since I guess this is a very rare keyboard, I'm not going to retrobrite this. Doesn't bother me too much. It's a used machine and has little patina, so I'm, I'm fine with that. They're cleaned. I will put them back in and then I will show you the final result. And this is the finished product. As you can see, the front print on the keys with the pesky characters is bright white and the keys themselves, the key print on the top is quite yellowed. But the machine did come out really, really nicely. There are no cracks in the case, no broken off uh, stands or anything. It's just a really, really nice machine. Let me turn this around. It's the version with the port descriptions on the case. And we have this huge dial to select the ROM. There are actually two ROMs inside in here right now. One is the IEEC ROM. I guess this was used um, to use the Commodore PET double floppy on a C64 with a special interface. And this is a BIOS ROM for this, and there's also the original C64 BIOS ROM. So just a short video about those keys, and let me put the microphone close to the keyboard. Very short intro. Yeah, that was interesting find. Got this in my collection for about two years. It's my workhorse C64, which I'm using pretty much every day. Um, and I finally got to clean it. Nice, and it came out really nicely. It has this very special keyboard. Okay. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye. So please like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and until next time, bye bye.